I'm happy to share the work that we've done on a responsible state behavior in cyberspace. So the framework that I want to start off with is looking at how norms lead to laws and lead to rules. And norms are when we agree on what is acceptable state behavior. If any of you managed to catch the video earlier by FireEye, norms are voluntary. They are non-binding, but they are meaningful because they are agreements on what's acceptable. And when you can agree on that, that's the first stage because you need to develop international laws, either by interpreting existing laws or making possibly new ones based on these norms. Without an agreement on norms, how do you develop laws? These laws then become part of the rules of behavior that states, responsible states will follow. I can't account for rogue states. Rogue states do what they do, but at least on the responsible states, we can have a rules-based order. And what has the UN done so far? A lot. We've been going to the meetings and you can see all the way the OEWG and the initials are explained at the top, right? We being the open-ended working group, which is of all states. It <clears throat> refers back to the UN General Assembly, which said that adopts norms and international law. And they also refer back to the 2015 UNGGE group of governmental experts, which is a group of smaller group of states, which created views on how international law applies. So the UN does recognize that international law applies to cyber operations. And this dates goes back to 2013, when it was said that international law, and in particular, the UN Charter is applicable. This has been supported by ASEAN at the ASEAN Minister's Cyber Conference, AMCC. This has been supported by Singapore, establishing an ASEAN Singapore Cybersecurity Center of Excellence. ASEAN and US leaders have reaffirmed it. The EU has recalled this. And the OAS, International Law Department, has circulated a questionnaire on international law. So all the regional groups are in some sort of agreement that international law applies and there should be norms of behavior. And on the track two side, CSCAP, Council for Security Cooperation Asia Pacific, has a study group on this. And even the ICRC, the International Committee of the Red Cross, has said international humanitarian law should apply to cyber operations. And there were regional consultations in 2019. As of now, the OEWG has issued its report, and it's a positive report. As usual, at UN level, you can't really go into the fine details, but it's a good start. And the UNGGE is in progress and is going to continue its meetings this year. So the norms that were agreed on in 2015 at the UNGGE, which I will give you more details about later, are here. But if you can just look at these norms, they look pretty good, right? Good practices, cooperation, consider relevant information, don't damage each other's critical infrastructure. Can't really argue with these. I'm going to talk to you about other international initiatives that came from groups that also participated in the UN open-ended working groups, intersessional, multi-stakeholder meeting, what a mouthful, and proposed their views there. So. Yeah, one a little picture that one of my colleagues took of us while we were there. And the multi-stakeholder group really illustrated that it's not just the states or the UN groups that are having this, but it's a lot of support. If you saw in the FireEye video, Microsoft has a digital Geneva Convention. Now, let's put this in perspective. These private sector initiatives are not a binding law, right? Microsoft cannot make international law. Uh, but it is a strong signal that a huge, huge cooperation with many, many, many customers. And we are, of course, using a Microsoft platform for this very webinar. Feels that these are important norms of behavior. And you will see that there are, besides individual companies, there are also initiatives like the Charter of Trust, which started out with 16 members and is growing. Munich Security Conference huge telcos, Airbus, Allianz, Cisco, tech companies, telecom companies, IT companies, and they're already implementing projects from threat info sharing 
to supply chain security. And besides this, there was the Global Commission for Stability of Cyberspace, which had 26 commissioners from government, industry, technical, and civil society. And it was supported by governments and corporations and the UN. And they've completed their work, but these are the norms that they have recommended. You see a lot of overlap with the UN GGE norms. Protect the public core, prevent electoral infrastructure, protect electoral infrastructure, which wasn't in the UN GGE norms. But, you know, who's going to argue with that, right? Avoid tampering, no botnets. Yeah. So there are clearly a lot of entities that are very interested in this. And they are looking at it from different angles. For example, the Paris call for trust and security in cyberspace, which was started in France, hence the Paris call, because the idea was to have neither the Californian internet, which was considered too corporate, or the Chinese internet, which was considered all government. And that's got 564 official supporters to begin with. That's huge. You see how large it is. And the principles that they came out with, again, many of the same thing, protect individuals, protect infrastructure, <coughs> cyber hygiene, And the last one from the private sector, the Cyber Tech Accord to protect all users and customers. These are a group of tech companies that came up with these norms or behavior as well. And all of these were presented to the UN Open-Ended Working Group. So it is before the UN. And all the states, member states, leaders know that everybody from the whole of society is interested is very concerned that there should be rules in cyberspace. And there is also this Shanghai Cooperation Organization, which developed their own international effort to develop norms of behavior in a digital space. You can see who the members are in the map. And this was submitted to the UN General Assembly in 2011 and 2015. So this proposal of a code is also put before the UN. And it bears in mind the recommendations of the UNGGE, meaning those 11 norms. Again, we come back to those 11 norms. It also proposes additional norms could be developed. And members of the SEO also participated in the UN Open Ended Working Group. So it all comes back together to those 11 norms, which are the core of the norms of behavior that responsible states seem to be able to agree upon. Of course, there could be additional norms. And the private sector proposes some, some states want to propose some, but the 11 norms are the core. So what do these 11 norms mean? A quick whirlwind tour of them. 13 in. Cooperate to increase stability and security. So work together with neighboring states to be able to help each other with cybersecurity. Check all the information before you attribute any blame. It's very easy to be fooled in a cyber attack as to who the attacker is. So check before you blame. Let me show you an example of this. Let's say Fireland plants a malware on the servers of Waterland and Waterland's not aware. Those infected servers then attack Airland and Airland says, we've been a cyber attack. Where did it come from? They think that the malware must have come from Waterland because that's the last stop. So if they don't consider all the information and try and get info to trace back, then there's the danger that Airland will now be blaming Waterland, Waterland and wanting to take countermeasures. All kinds of action they might want to take to retaliate, even though Waterland is actually innocent. And meanwhile, Fireland is laughing all the way to the bank. So these are the dangers of wrongful attribution, which is why the second norm is so important. We must consider all information before attributing blame. Third one, do not allow your territory to be used for wrongful acts. The example that I showed you was is where Waterland was not aware. But what if Waterland had actually told Fireland, hey, you can use our servers to attack Airland? That's not 
that's not acceptable under this norm, okay? You're not supposed to let your territory be used to launch an attack on somebody else. Of course, if you are not aware, then we say you're not really responsible. But what if you were not aware and then you were put on notice by the victim? Ah, then you might have some responsibility to help the victim to solve the problem. Now, of course, some of the people who are stuck in the middle are going to say, help, we don't have the capacity. That's where capacity building is so important. And we've got so many capacity building efforts I'm going to talk about to support the development of that norm. Fourth norm, cooperation, exchanging info, prosecuting terrorists and crime. And sometimes the hackers are in another country. And I think there are some delegates from Malaysia here, and Malaysia has been such a great partner with Singapore in capturing hackers because one of our big uh, hacker captures was of a hacker called the Messiah Hacker who attacked Singapore sites and then ran off to Malaysia. And with the help of Royal Malaysian Police, we were able to catch him in Kuala Lumpur. So that's great cooperation. Fifth one, respect for human rights. I think that's something we can all get behind. Uh, in sixth one, not damage critical infrastructure. Now, it's one thing to damage critical infrastructure like power stations, telcos, or hospitals. But if it's a norm that this should not be done, then we should all be able to get behind the victim and say to the attacker, that's not acceptable. That's where a norm is really powerful because by having the whole group of us say, you know what, that behavior is not acceptable, that has great diplomatic power. Of course, we want to protect our own critical infrastructure as a norm. That's definitely something that we should be protecting our own critical infrastructure. And helping others to protect critical infrastructure so that if a neighboring state is under attack, and we have the capacity to help, we can go and help. Sometimes traffic is passing through our territory, we can cut it off, or we can send people with the skills. Now, this one is a bit complicated. Supply chain integrity. And to make sure that we don't put backdoors or we put secret hidden codes inside the software that is exported. This is a really dangerous thing because if you've heard of the solar winds incident, where 18,000 customer companies, 18,000 companies were breached because the network management software had a malware code in the network management software. That is so dangerous, including apparently many power utilities. So we really want to have this as a norm. It's not acceptable to put bad code inside uh, software that should be used for legitimate causes. Which also means if we find a vulnerability, we find a weakness, then we also share that information. We don't try and make use of it for ourselves. That Because it helps everybody's safety if we disclose that, hey, we found that's actually something wrong with this software that lets hackers in we should actually share that information. That should be a norm as well. And the people who are doing the work in finding these weaknesses and solving these problems, the computer emergency response teams or certs, there's also a norm to not attack them because they are like the ambulances and the hospitals of cyberspace when it comes to a cyber operation. And just as we have heard, under international humanitarian law, you shouldn't, we cannot attack a hospital or medical facility, even in peacetime, even in the, if it would give a military advantage. So this, in the, likewise, the computer emergency response team, being the hospital or the ambulance of cyberspace, should also be exempt from attack. This also means that we shouldn't be using these resources to go and launch attacks, that's really terrible. That's really terrible. So that in a nutshell 
is the 11 norms. And a lot of capacity building is needed in order to get everybody up to speed to be able to live out these norms. So my colleague, Eugene Tan, has actually been part of many of the cyber norms capacity building activities in Manila, Kuala Lumpur, and Sydney. And what we've discovered is that different countries, and even within the same countries, different ministries have different interpretations sometimes. So each country needs to figure out what's a cyber attack? What are you more concerned about and what's your priorities? Is it scams, cyber porn, fake news, or is it hacking? And many countries don't have a cyber agency. So basically, you know, when a problem belongs to no, to somebody, nobody, everybody, basically it's much, much harder to take care of it. And many senior officials across different sectors are interested and they should be included. So there's still need for clarity on what the norms can achieve. And track two has a role. So please include your academics and your private sector as well. Now the case study, ASEAN really needs cyberspace. And because digital transformation is really important and for many other regions as well. But we have different levels of cyber maturity and maybe it might be same for your region. So capacity building is needed. And we were able to convene the ASEAN Ministers Cybersecurity Conference where the ASEAN ministers as a region have agreed on the norms and agreed on a point country to set up a mechanism for the norms. And as a result, last year announced that Singapore and the UN will draw a checklist and ASEAN will share its experience and knowledge with the UN. And what next for ASEAN? Capacity building programs, lots of work with different partners, and confidence building measures, a like joint training sharing information and contacts. So I leave you with this framework for responsible state behavior. And as much as you can, wherever you are in your country, support the development of norms and building capacity to meet those norms so that based on those norms, we can have then laws. And from those laws, we can have the rules that responsible states can follow to have a rules-based order in cyberspace. Thank you.